Hey YouTube, I'm going to make a video about this little guy here. This is a CMC Datastar, and what this is, is it's a telephone remote terminal. They called it a CAT, or Craft Access Terminal, and it allowed the phone company repair techs to complete and download their service tickets or their job tickets for the jobs they needed to go on the repair calls. So we're going to turn this on. I'm going to show you a little about it because there's not a whole lot of info about these. Another collector did upload a video, an actual, uh, an actual copy of a VHS tape that went over the use of it, like an actual training video. But I'm going to show what this one is and a little about it. So, if we hit escape, we get back to the main menu, and you can navigate it with these keys, and we don't have a way to update it, but there's all types of different menus it has. So, we go down to system access. And I just turned it off. Oops. So you got ultra access, which is would be to their system, and then tan access, which I'm not for sure what that is. That was not mentioned in the video. But as you can see, Southwestern Bell, that was the local phone company around here. And if we go into Ultra Access, we get this. So you can data access, view capture data, edit directory, and then that was the phone number it would have called out on. Uh, whenever I call it, I get a busy signal, so I'm guessing it's out of service. But if you go to Data Access... <laughs> Um, you can see what different settings it has. There's also a caller ID test. Um, if you capture data, see there's an old, there's an old ticket on here. It shows the switch info and the wire pair and all that. But I just thought this thing was kind of cool. So here's the caller ID setting. Now I don't have, my PBX doesn't uh, transmit caller ID, so I can't hook it up to that, but I can show you a little bit. If we open this up, inside here, there's this little cord that comes with it, and that plugs in right here. You can see it's got a serial port as well, and I'll show you the battery pack here in a minute. That's kind of neat. So we'll plug that in. Here's the battery pack. This side's for the backlight. I just didn't get batteries out. Uh, it did have a corroded terminal. I was able, to, or there's actually a jumper that goes from this terminal to this one that was corroded. I was able to replace it with phone wire, of course. And then I believe this to be some kind of inverter. I don't know how, how much voltage it's actually putting out. But we will plug this into our test line over here. And being it's a PBX, it does not have the 50 volts it's expecting. It operates more on 20, about 25 volts. But we'll go down to voice access. And if we hit PF1, you got dial tone. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's ringing the payphone in the other room. And I'll go in there and you can hear it.
So there's that. Now, if it was hooked up to a real POTS line, you wouldn't see that busy, no battery, because the voltage is just too low on the system, on the PBX for it too. So we'll, so that's really that. There was an adapter that came with it that had alligator clips to allow you to go from the modular plug to an alligator clip test lead, but they would connect this to an active phone line dial in and provide a password according to the video which is like a numeric password and download their work orders and then complete them listing what type of trouble they found at that location and what need to be done stuff like that so really cool little piece of equipment that you really don't see anymore now their stuff is all done over cellular obviously no more Dialing in because copper lines are becoming more and more a thing of the past. But I wanted to share this. I thought a lot of the fellow telecom nerds would get a kick out of it. And it is a pretty cool little thing. A friend of mine gave me I do not have the user manual for it, unfortunately. And that would be something that would be neat if someone knew a link to a PDF of one because I cannot find one. But there you have it. The craft access terminal from communications manufacturing company. There's the info for it. This one was, looks like it was made around, what did it say on there? The program on it is from 96. And the last, they came out in around 91 or 92. And the last ticket that was on there was 98. Apparently, most of the Bell companies used them up into the very early 2000s. So, by that time, cellular equipment was advanced enough that they could have a cellular modem in their laptop and be able to do it that way. But yeah, this runs on AA batteries. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.